Kia ora koutou. Welcome back to um, Storytime with Mato and Michael. Here we have Tamati Tuatui, wishing he could go outside and fly around in the beautiful punga outside. Um, but this morning I thought we'd uh, share a bit of a scary story. A bit of a scary story. It's not that scary, really. Um, it's called The Weir Nana. The Weir Nana. Now, my nana wasn't scary. My nana was really nice, really kind. So I really liked the, the title of this book, Weir Nana. It made me think, what does it mean, Weir Nana? Is she a werewolf? Is she, where is Nana? I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to get started. So this book is written by um, Melinda Zymanik and illustrated by Sarah Nelasiwi Anderson. So let's get into it. The Weir Nana. Not a bedtime story. Ooh. For Stella Rose's older brother, Simon, there was no better fun than scaring his sister. Have you got a big brother like that? Sometimes it was shouting, boo, when she least expected it. Sometimes it was pulling a spy, putting a spider on her plate. But Simon's favourite way to frighten his sister was to tell her a scary story. Ooh. Look at that big spider. Today, Stella Rose was frightened. Her nana Lupin was flying in from a faraway country and Stella Rose's family was going to the airport to pick her up. Stella Rosa had never met Nana Lupin before, but she knew her voice sounded horribly hollow and hard to understand when she spoke on the phone. And when and she knew Nana Lupin looked scary in the big black coat she wore in all her photos. Stella Rosa was not did not want to meet spooky old Nana Lupin. Stella Rosa already felt nervous, so she did not ignore she did not ignore her brother as she should have when he sat close to her in the car and began to speak into her ear. She has whiskers, Simon said, as they pulled out of the driveway. They scratch your skin when she hugs you. Oh, what a mean brother. She has long, sharp fingernails, she said as they drove along the motorway. Like claws. They dig into you when she pulls you close. And don't think for a minute she'll be arriving on a plane. She rides a witch's broom that she borrows from her witch friends. She's a werenatter, he whispered. Just like a werewolf, she gives you a big sloppy nana kiss. And instead of turning into a wolf, you turn into a wicked were-nana, just like her. <laughs> I'm scared. Of course, Simon had never met Nana Lupin either, but that was not important. What mattered was having fun. But you take that the special potion before you left home. Did you take that special potion before you left home? Simon asked as they turned into the airport road. I took mine. She can kiss me all she likes. I don't want to meet Nanda Lupin, Sella Rosa cried. She's a werewolf in disguise. Don't be silly, Stella Rosa. Who told you that? said her mother. Stella Rosa couldn't help but look at her brother. I never ever called her a werewolf, Simon said. He made a growly wolf face at his sister. 
I said she was like a werewolf, he whispered. Stella Rosa said nothing. They had arrived. The airport building loomed over her like Dracula's castle with its control tower turret and its thousand empty eye windows looking down on her. Stella Rosa shivered. Not all those windows are empty. Not all those windows are empty, Simon whispered in his sister's ear. Nana's witchy friends are up there. They've been waiting for you. They can call, they can smell when you haven't had the potion. They'll be letting Nana know. Stella Rosa shuddered. <gasps> Once inside the bustling terminal, Stella Rosa wished she was invisible. She didn't want to meet Nana Lupin with her hairy chin and her long fingernails and her witch's broom, and Stella Rosa definitely didn't want to be a weird Nana herself. Stella Rosa's father raised an arm and waved it high above the crowd. <gasps> There she was, Nana Lupin, wide in her black wool coat with a dark scarf tied around her head. She strode towards them. Oh, how Stella Rosa wished she smelled of potion. How Stella Rosa wished she smelled of potion. Why hadn't her mum given her some? Stella Rosa watched as Nana Lupin first kissed Stella Rosa's father, then her mother, and then Simon. There was no one else between Stella Rosa and her Nana. Simon winked at his sister. It was Stella Rosa's turn. Nana Lupin sniffed. She's been talking to her witch friends, Simon whispered instead to Stella Rosa. She's smelling you. She can't wait to kiss you. Nana Lupin reached out for Stella Rosa. No! Screamed Stella Rosa. Stella Rosa, where are your manners? Cried her mother. Her mother cried. She's a weird Nana, Stella Rosa sobbed, like a werewolf. Her friends are witches, and she has a hairy face and claws in her hands. One kiss, and I'll turn into a weird Nana, just like her. Uh oh. Suddenly, Stella Rosa gasped. Nana Lupin was peeling off her coat like a wolf shedding its skin. She took off her scarf and she shook out her hair. Oh, Nana, she said, you're lovely. Of course I am, my little one, Nana Lupin said, pulling Stella Rosa into a big hug. And I'm definitely not a weir, Nana, she said. Whatever gave you that idea? Simon told me. It was just a story, Simon said, smiling wickedly. You should be careful about the stories you tell, Nana Lupin said, turning to Simon. She leaned down to whisper in his ear. I wonder what she's going to say. After all, she murmured, you were right about my friends being witches. And they save their most horrible spells to use on bad brothers. <laughs> oh, what a cool little story about a little girl who got told a scary story by her brother, but it wasn't true.
I don't think I don't think it was true. No. Nana's are nice. My Nana was very nice. She was lovely. She used to make the best, best baking. Um, my favourites were her peanut brownies. What do you, what do you love about your Nana? Hmm. There's so many things I loved about my Nana. Have a great day. Kakite. <laughs>